Now brings it back out on his own. Puyon over. Dixon, two-point shot and score. Our third two-point goal of the game. And second for Dixon. Second for Dixon as he got the nice feed from Pete Poyon. So Poyon getting an assist at 534. We're still waiting for them to change the scoreboard. And at foot is behind the line. So that will count as a two-point goal. 12 to 6 is our score here at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. The home of the Chesapeake Bayhawks. Bayhawks have been bouncing around in venues the last couple years. This is probably one of the better choices that they've made. A lot of space, very convenient, easy to get to, and a lot of family history, friendly. A lot of history. A lot of guys like playing here. There's the face off after the goal. Both guys battling for possession. The midfielders coming in, jockeying for position, waiting for that ball to, ball to pop out. PT oh. gets the ball hit away from him, but the Bayhawks will corral it as it gets picked up by Matt Abbott. The gazelle, now the running gazelle up the field. moving his way up the field. PT coming off, Vetter coming in. Also coming in is going to be Prosner, who was off sides, but they didn't see it. Lucky for us. Lucky for us. <laughs> Prosner with the ball, waiting for everybody to get in. Here comes Dixon. Dixon out the two-point line, pulls the trigger, shot goes high. He was inside the arc. Johnny Christmas backing him up. Christmas steps in bounds, gets the ball over to Vetter. Vetter swings the ball up high. Prosner with the ball at the end, now working his way to the two-point line. Gladding with the ball, nice spin move, moves towards the goal, shot, and it goes in off the stick. Drew Adams was there. Made the save. Made the save, and the just ball took just... A, it was like a knuckler went yeah. into the back of his foot. He got the knuckle puck going in on him. 427 is the time of the goal. It'll be 13 to 6. And a nice move made. So no assist on the goal by Gladding. And that's gonna again 13 to 6 is our score. We get set here for the face-off. And Gladding's second goal of the game now has three points with two goals and assist. Alex Smith at the face-off. One of the better face-off artists in the league. Gets it right to P.T. Ritchie. He has perfected that pop-up move. Yeah, now 12 of 18 on the face-off today. And now bringing the ball in is Benson Irwin. Irwin part of that face-off line. And he's going to run off the field. Coming in is Poyon and Dixon. Poyon with the ball. Near side. Bayhawks moving from the right to left here in the third quarter of action. Four minutes to go. Dixon with the ball, working that two-point line. Vetter, Depoyon, down inside goal line extended. Nice back check by the Lizards. Underhand shot by Poyon. It goes in. It's a score. Another goal. Pete Poyon's fourth goal on the day. At 347, and a timeout being called. And necessarily so, I'm sure, for Long Island. Well, three, three unanswered goals, and one of them being a two-point, so... Four points rattled off in the last uh, basically two and a half minutes. Poyon had no defense on him. He was able to step into that shot and get the goal. He was about three feet in from that two-point line, so still a pretty nice distance on that shot as teams take a timeout. We're going to take a break here. 14-6 to six is our score. You're listening to Chesapeake Bayhawks lacrosse, brought to you by the Maryland Sports Insider on HerbFM.com. Waters go straight through. And we're back here, Chesapeake Bayhawks Lacrosse. Brian Barsham and Jared Welsh bring it to you on the Maryland Sports Insider as we get restarted here after the goal, 14 to 6, and the timeout, 340 left to play in our third quarter of action. The Bayhawks working very well together with a mostly a, a rebuilt team here. Doesn't really look like it. Looks like these guys have been playing together for a while. Really shows the professionalism of these athletes. Dixon with the ball. At the two-point line shot save made by Adams. Adams has come up pretty big. 
but has also let some easy ones get by him, kind of the ebb and flow of what happens as a goaltender as we move through. Other game in action here tonight. Brian, do we have an update from the other MLL game? 13-9, yep, to nine, uh, Boston over uh, Denver. Uh, also score update, NCAA. Uh, UVA up 12-1 to one over Mount St. Mary's. Uh, that's at halftime right now. And Stony Brook and Denver, 9-7 to seven still in the fourth. Stony Brook. So Stony Brook winning that game, which I believe we both – Predicted, if I remember. Oh, I think oh, we actually you, picked Denver. Did we pick Denver? We both picked Denver. Uh oh. But Stony Brook uh, getting another home game because the uh, next round will be held at Stony Brook. Right. Flag on the field. Waiting to see who will have that ball. We'll run out of bounds. Vetter doing a nice job just pushing the ball out of bounds to reset the clock and figure out the penalty. We're going to have a slash. So one minute, extra man opportunity here for the Lizards. Coming off the field is Ray McGill, the defenseman from Maryland, 2007 graduate. So Terrapins pretty well represented on this team. ACC represented well on this team as well. Yeah, between the two teams, actually, ACC represented pretty well. Lizards working the ball around. They have the extra man for up to a minute. Working the ball at goal line extended. Nice jump pass. He was in the crease. There's the flag. And that's what they're going to call, I believe. They're going to call a slash. Whoa, that's almost like that's, you jumped right into the player. He jumped so. into it. Well, that's like those ticky-tack NBA fouls. They don't call them right anymore. You know, you jump, you know, you kick your leg out to get the touch on the shot. 204 on the clock, and it looks like it's going to be Joe Sinoski running off, getting called. For the slash. So now McGill and Sinoski, two long poles in the box. The Bayhawks with f only four men on the defensive end of the field. Shot and score, Long Island. Going in, I believe it was Tom Zumo. Happened real quick there on the reset after the penalty with 155 left to play in the game, getting the ball. Goal line extended, passing the ball forward, tiptoeing the crease, and a shot going high in on Garrity. Now as he gets set for the faceoff, whistles blown, jockey for position, Alex Smith winning the faceoff yet again, pushing it upfield, PT with the ball, spins around. Kicks it out. Hawks are going to settle it. PT running off, waiting for Vetter to get on the offensive end of the field. Vetter now with the ball at the end, at midfield, getting to Poyan on the near side. Bayhawks working from the right to left. Christmas gets the ball behind the net. Makes a move, rolling around the crease. Gets double teamed, dumped, and there's the flag. And Spolina and Diagostino both there on the hit, and we'll see who gets called for the slash. It looks like Spolina is running off the field for the, his third penalty of the game, now racking up three minutes worth of penalties just by himself for the Lizards, and that's a tough position to put your team in. However, the Bayhawks have not been able really to capitalize on the EMO today, only scoring once on the extra man. Both Bayhawks are out of the penalty box. Spelina in for the Lizards. Gladding with the ball. On the near side, two-point arc. Kicks it out to Dixon. Dixon stepping back to about the 40-yard line would be on the turf. Gladding now over to Poyon. Poyon back to Gladding. They're setting up their play, trying to get the mismatch. Long Island is sliding pretty well, playing what looks more like a zone-type defense because of the man down. Dixon thought about shooting, backs out, gets it to Combs. Combs dumps the ball, gets it back, back to Dixon at the top. Nice ball movement here by the Hawks, but they're going to run out of penalty time. 16 seconds, 13 seconds left on the shot clock, 21 on the game clock. Eight seconds, the ball rolls out of bounds. So possession goes to Long Island, and that 
basically kills the penalty. Here comes Long Island, 14 seconds. Pizer with the ball. Steven Pizer. And an errant horn was blown. They will reset the shot clock and the game clock, it looks like. No, they're going to turn the shot clock off. Only eight seconds left. Kind of disrupts the... Kind of the flow Kind there. of the He's flow there for the Lizards. Kind of a, a to home, hometown up. buzzer yeah. there on the horn. Eight seconds left. And now the Lizards getting their guys in position to bring this ball in. They're going to up it to ten seconds because of the errant horn. Lizards with the ball. One on one, back behind the back shot, goes wide, follow up shot. Bayhawks possession, they throw it downfield. So at the end of three, our score is 14 to 7 in favor of the Chesapeake Bayhawks here at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with our fourth and final quarter of action. You're listening to Chesapeake Bayhawks Across here on the Maryland Sports Insider, brought to you by HerbFM.com. o'clock on Saturday and Sunday mornings. You can access us on MarylandSportsInsider.com or HerbFM.com, our sister station. We have some interesting developments here in the NCAA tournament. Brian's got the bracket here with him. Uh, what's the newest development in terms of the bracket? Stony Brook, Denver, just going final. 9-7, Stony Brook advancing. Uh, looks like at this point they're going to take on Virginia. Uh, if anything else changes, it's 12-1 in halftime uh, versus Mount St. Mary, Stony Brook. Uh, with three goals in the fourth, uh, in order to put them on top nine to seven, uh, Denver making a valiant effort. Tierney and his team. We talked about them all year. Rough start of the year, and uh, came on strong at the end, winning their conference, uh, moving in as an automatic qualifier. But Stony Brook, with their firepower, we've seen what they can do all season long. So the Bayhawks winning the opening faceoff here in our fourth quarter of action, bringing the ball across is Matt Abbott, the Syracuse graduate, played in the championship game last year was part of the game tying goal at the end of regulation with his behind the back pass gets the ball up top gets it over to Johnny Christmas who's working that two point line steps inside shot goes wide and out of bounds Rubior will pick up the restart bring it back in Chris was pretty silent today we haven't seen our typical you know bull dodging towards the middle uh, being able to uh, come up with those uh, nice uh, one-handed goals. Uh, kind of very just silent, kind of yeah. learning the system and then getting acclimated with the players. Well, it's one of those things, you know, we deal with an injury, and, and Brian, both of us, know from experience that when you have an injury that limits you and what you can do, uh, you really, sometimes you go a little easy on it. You, um, with, you know, blown out shoulders, couldn't swim the way I wanted to. With the ankle injuries you had, couldn't necessarily do all the things you wanted to do on the court. Christmas probably experiencing Still the same thing. Speed. Maybe afraid to make some moves. Uh, so take a little bit to get his confidence back. He just had a shot deflected wide. Now Dixon with the ball, the two-point line. Shot gets tipped from behind, goes out of bounds, was backed up by Danny Gladding. Danny and Billy Gladding both playing today. Danny wearing number nine, Billy wearing, tw Billy wearing number 25 for the Bayhawks. Abbott with the ball at the end, swings it over to Poyon at that midfielder space off line. Works it back to midfield, nice and high, setting up that Maryland offense as the